Look who it is. Look who wasn't here until the camera and the tripod showed up. Look who's getting ready to be a pain in my tail while I'm trying to film a video. Don't you have anything better to do, Kev? Whatever, man. Just keep it down, would you? Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to be turning this into this. If you're curious how we got to this point, you should be able to find links of the two previous videos of this project in the description of this video. If you're new around here, my name's Austin Ross. My goal here on this channel is to help you go further faster with your welding career or hobby, whatever you may be using your fabrication skills for, by way of just sharing what I've learned in the short 15 years of my welding career. If these are videos that you're interested in, make sure and subscribe and ring that bell to get notified whenever we post a new video every Friday. I say we because I do not work alone. These videos would not be possible without the help of my wife, Kayla. She does all the back end stuff with the YouTube videos as well as the online store that we have. Again, if you're new around here and you may not know much about us, we do have an online store where we carry some goods, including the soapstone that you may see me use, grinder holder, circle burner, a few other things. You can go check it out, arosbuilding.com. If you're interested or if you wanna support us, you can do that via the store or just continue to watch this video. It all helps us continue to do what we do here online and share and help you and others. And lastly, check out the Aros Welding Inner Circle over there on our website, arosbuilding.com. The Inner Circle is essentially a social media platform for welders, small business owners, and a few other types of people. Just want to let you know about it in case you didn't. We are figuring out slowly but surely that it helps to mention things that we've created because we feel like we're a broken record because if we mention it too much, we feel like we might get on the nerves of those of you that follow weekly. So for that, we do apologize. But what we don't apologize is for letting those of you that are new or may not know about stuff know about stuff that we've created because that's our goal here is to help people and if we don't talk about it people don't find out about it and we're, we're we feel like we're essentially doing you a disservice so for those of you that are new welcome and check out the stuff we've created we hope it is helpful if you have any questions about anything we've created the store or anything that you see us do here on the youtube channel or online you can text your questions to 405-643 7176. I will get that message directly, me or Kayla will get it directly and we will do our best to answer any questions you may have or help you in any way. First things first, we need to decide what angle we need to set our pieces of pipe at like so. And for those of you that may not have seen the previous video that we done, I don't know, several months ago of this right here, we turned a piece of square tubing into a triangle. In that video, we talked about what angles were needed right here, right here, and right here to make a triangle. We'll put a link in the description of that video. That way you can go learn what we learned that day about triangles. But in short, for this video, we know that we need three 60 degree angles to make a triangle. So I, what I've got here is a angle finder. A lot of you have asked where I got this angle finder. I got it from my local welding supply. I've looked all over online and cannot find this exact one. But if you will just Google angle finder, there's several that will work for this same purpose whenever you're you're doing projects and you need a specific angle. So I just encourage you to go Google angle finder. Maybe one day we'll have it in the Aros welding store, either this one or one that's similar. Uh, but this thing has come in handy over the years and uh, I'm gonna be using it today to make sure we get the proper angle on the pieces that we're fixing to put in. All right, now that we know the angle that we need to put these at, I've got to figure out how I'm gonna hold this at the proper angle because I'm gonna have to do some eyeballing, if you will. Those of you that have been around, you know that I rely on the old eyeball a lot, but I'm gonna have to get down here, set this here, and then eyeball this to the proper angle and then tack it off with a most likely a stick welder on the back of my truck there. And I just realized I could, I could probably hold that like so. And then with my stinger handy, I could whoo, tack it like so. But what I think I'm gonna do to make it less frustrating and more enjoyable is use this A-frame that you see sitting around us here. It is on wheels. If you're interested in building your own A-frame, to help you do things more enjoyable and uh, less frustrating. You can find prints of this exact A-frame on our website, arosswelding.com. Let me get my coffee out of the way. Go ahead and tip this back. Look you there, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so I gotta lift it up some. 
my mullet. By the way, this frame that we've got built so far needs to be level. And then I'm also gonna have to make sure this right here is a 90 before I tack it. I will be offsetting the uprights that we're putting in today. Offset as in putting it here versus directly in line, just to save us some time of having to cope this ear to go around this ear. And then at, my goal is to have the same distance between, you know, the same space between this piece and this piece, the offset that I talked about. But as I'm looking at this, most likely I'm just gonna line the edge of this up with the edge of this. But that'll still give us space in between, uh, in between our pipe. Yeah, buddy. Now I just gotta fire up this old SAE 300. Come on. The only welding rod that I will be using on this project is 332 7018. That's what I've got this frame tacked up with so far, and that's all I plan on using during the whole project. So, yes, that means uphill welding for this old downhill pipeline welder. My original plan was to put one tack here, but I may end up putting two tacks on each piece that I put up, because whenever we go to lay this top piece in, these may not, they may not all line up, so I wanna be able to cut a tack and adjust whichever ones need adjusted to make them all line up. Who knows, they might line up perfectly, but from the general fabrication experience, situations like this, they normally don't, won't line up, especially just eyeballing stuff like I'm doing. Okay, so we're lined up with our line, we're 90 here. I'm gonna go ahead and put a tack on this ear here. Check my angle again. See, it needs to lean this way a touch. So I might put a tack over here to, to make sure it stays close to 90 this way. And then I'm gonna check this angle again. Make sure it's pretty close to a 60. Looks like it needs to come down a touch. All right, now I'll just do that two, four, five more times. Move my A-frame one last time. I went ahead and put a magnet on here because my hook kept slipping off. So I got this magnet for Christmas one year. My uh, brother-in-law got it for me because I was too tight to buy it for myself, I reckon. And he knows I'm a tight wad, so he thought that would be a good Christmas present for you, brother man. So he bought it for me for Christmas, him and his uh, girlfriend. So. I appreciate that. Thank you all for this, because it's super handy. This is a uh, strong hand brand. It's got a on and off switch right here uh, on each side. That way, so it's working really handy here because I can put it up against the pipe, turn it on, sticks to the pipe like so. Let me go grab my last piece and I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about. Put it on here like so. And I also learned on this last piece that I did, I learned that uh, the direction this chain is falling affects, because see right now, I need to move my A-frame that way a little bit, that way this chain falls right here, and this sets, because right now it's hovering, if you can see right here, it's like hovering, which I haven't found my angle here yet, obviously it needs to go down, but I guess I better check that first. My whole point is, is doing this, I've learned that Everything's got to be at the proper, by myself, without somebody holding it, everything's got to be at the proper uh, spot on here and the proper uh, angle, hanging, angle of the dangle. The proper spot for this to hang. Words, I need words. <laughs> so anyway, I'm just, I'm just learning. I'm, I'm all, all kinds of learning right now is what I'm getting at. 
Okay, it needs to come down some more. So that is pretty close. And I've also been I've also been leaving it hanging down a little bit like past my 60 degrees because whenever I go to get it 90, I'd say, I don't know, 80% of the time on these last few that I've done, I'd go to get it 90, like I gotta move this in a little bit, it would affect my 60 degree this way. So I call that compensating. It's, a, it's like an experience tip that I'm trying to share with you right now is I'm compensating for future movement, if that makes sense. Like, uh, like I get it close there, but by moving it to get my 90 the other way, it affects that angle also, to make a long story short. And whenever I tack it back here, it might actually pull that up a little bit. So to account for that draw and for my getting it 90, I leave this down just to, I mean, just a touch, not much. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and move this chain out of my way, get my, get my bullet ready, knock the slag off the end there. Okay, so. I am 90 on my line, give her a tack. Now, I'll go back down here and eyeball this angle. And it looks like it didn't move, so I gotta pull it up a touch to get it up to my 60 degree, make sure that's 60. Check this, make sure it's a 90 again and go ahead and put one more tack on this. Oh my gosh. Now if that ain't satisfying, I don't know what is. I mean, satisfy. Look at there, perfect little old saddle for our pot to sit down in. Now the question is, is will it be able to sit down in there? Or will I have to bring it from the end to poke it in? Uh, no, it should sit down in here because I can roll down here and I can see that here. I think, I think, I think it should be able to just come from the top down versus like from where you and I are at poking it through in other words I'm worried about these ears stopping my well I'll tell you we'll do a test real quick I just get so tickled doing these projects here's the test let's see oh yeah oh yeah see I should be able to just set her right down in there all right got her cut to length now it's time to do the old handoff from the gin pole to the eight frame Chattanooga boy had a dollar and a dime. I hit it out to Nashville on the hard rock line. I'm working on that old steel. Do not use for lifting. When my feet had touched dry land, how happy I did feel. That'd be why. Do not use for lifting. I mean, I had to try it. You know, you just don't know until you try. I had to try. The very next thing you hear from me, I've been tied to a ball and chain. And I don't know where I'll be But if it wasn't for that old sheriff I'd be back in Tennessee Playing cards and crap games Not looking for the score Now that is just so cool So cool 
All right, I believe we're about ready to tack this top piece on. I, of course, will, uh, I'm gonna have to adjust it this way, make sure it's even with these down here. But once I get those even, pretty well just ready to put some tacks on all these top ones. I may throw a square in here. Uh, I'm not gonna have to cut any tacks like I was kind of anticipating. This here is the only one that's moving. Uh, like I can move it up a little bit, like so I might pick it up a little just to even the gap on each side. But other than that, everything else is is pretty fitting pretty good and ready for some tacks. I mean, satisfying, the coolest thing. I don't know why it's so cool to me, but it is. It's very cool, very neato Frito chili pie. Heck yeah, man. We will pick up the welding in next week's video. Thank you for joining me today. Don't forget to check out my website, arosswelding.com. You can find digital prints of the A-frame, digital prints of the gin pole that you've seen us use with the 95 today. And remember, learn something every day. But for real, thank you for joining me today. It was a pleasure having you. I hope you learned something. Don't forget to learn something every day. That's more than just a saying. My grandpa used to tell me that every day, every Sunday, I mean, every Sunday after church, we'd go over to my grandparents and eat lunch and whenever we would leave he would tell all us grandkids learn something every day and uh, as i got older i realized what he meant by that and the way i take that today is taking any opportunity or any situation that you get in from your day to day in your in your personal life and your work life whatever it is learn from your mistakes you know uh, try not to try not to see it as a failure try to see it as an opportunity to learn that's what I mean whenever I say learn something every day, as well as just researching things, you know, just, just learning, just soaking up any helpful things that'll help you grow as an individual or grow in your business, grow in your marriage, grow in school, whatever it may look like, just use learning experience to better your life. Thank you so much for watching. Like I said, don't forget to check out our website, arosswelding.com and the Aross Welding Inner Circle. If you have any questions about anything in this video today or anything on our website or anything that you've seen of ours online, text those questions to 405-643-7176. Thanks again for being here. Have an awesome weekend. And remember, learn something every day.